House and parliamentarians, including Deputy Speaker Joe Osei Wusu, were spotted rocking their black uh, stars jersey in Parliament. And there you have it on your screens now uh, with a Ghana flag uh, there as well um, in Parliament. Meanwhile, a black stars uh, jersey is uh, fast selling in Kumasi as well. Lava Femme's Nanai Aljima has uh, been engaging some of the vendors. God is Good Sportswear is one of the vibrant wholesale sports shops in Kumasi. During the African Cup of Nations 2021, the business stocked over a thousand pieces of Black Stars replica jerseys with the hope of making good sales, but they were left disappointed. Shop owner Emmanuel Ousu is however overwhelmed by the current show of support for the Black Stars, which translates into purchase of jerseys and paraphernalia. We don't put any in a cell, but on a cry, or my time like a kitchen. We need your mother and penis. Even the yellow ones, which are not liked by many, are being accepted. For the white ones, they are almost finished. Moving the game to Kumasi has helped us. Prices, no, prices, no, original, no, no, yeah, the gift 50. This year, she took us right at least 80 cities. Then thank God football have bring us together once again to show who is the king. Uh, Captain of the Super Eagles of Nigeria, Ahmed Musa, admits the clash nicknamed Jolof Derby is more than a football match. It's about politics, Nigeria, Ghana. It's about the Jolof that you just mentioned, Nigeria, Ghana. About music, <laughs> acting. What he said, you have Fufu and you have Eba. Which one will people will taste very well? So it's like Ghana go to a uh, World Cup or Nigeria go to World Cup. Everybody wish in this West Africa that two of them go, but it come to a situation that one of them have to drop. And we are not going to drop. They have to drop. So they know it. And Former captain of the Black Stars, Sami Osaikofo, will rate the game as one of the biggest games on the African soil. I quite remember we have a game in Nigeria whereby Abedi Pele wasn't even in the team, but we put his name in the team sheet. And his name come on the, what do you call it, the scoreboard. So was a, a, a bit confused for the Nigerians. And uh, by the time that they realized that he's not part of the team, they have already thinking about him, how to play against him and leave Odate Lamte and Tony Abuas. In 1955, Ghana beat Nigeria seven goals to nil in the Accra Sports Stadium. Dominating this fixture was legendary Babayara. Definitely for the Jorah rice, I think I'll give it to Ghana because I enjoy the Jorah rice very nicely. But for the football? For the football, leave it for Nigeria. They will win. Ifyom Achibion Agban has lived in Ghana for over a decade. He's married to a Ghanaian with kids. I, I remember a friend of mine told me that when, when Nigerian win, I should not pass his place again. <laughs> I should, I should pass the other way because he don't want to see me that I came and there are Nigerian people win. And that's why he was telling me. If I if Nigerian lose, mm. I will be fine. Then, then you will not be happy in the home. Oh, actually, I will be happy. I, there's there's no two about it. I can't leave my children because of the football. <laughs> then definitely, I will be I will be fine. They will laugh at you. Oh, actually, they, they, they might say, hey, then you Nigerian lose, Nigerian lose. Oh, life go on. <laughs> For some time, mainly in Kumase, the city that qualified the stars to the previous World Cup tournaments lost interest in the national team for poor performance, among other reasons. It however seems the rivalry between Ghana and Nigeria in the game of football is rejuvenating the love for the Black Stars. 4-0 in Babayara. When we get to Nigeria, we can give them a draw. That one, we are not bullied. I'm sure you want crying, actually, but Friday, we are, we are killing them off, like, straightforward. It's 4 or nothing. It's no we be enche bi bi aso no for done any zie anti black star for it. Are you confident of a victory for Ghana? Yeah, I'm I'm confident. Yeah. Any ambo eche ya kwa kose mo on, but I mean I'm saying Ghana dia ya kwa dia kwa kose. But the Nigerian community in Kumase is ready to match up the home team in terms of numbers at the stadium. We're actually hoping it's going to be a tough match because we are a bit confident that our star players can help us get the win. Okay, I would say um, mostly the attack, especially as Ndidi is missing. So yeah, the attack. Um, I'm looking to see the pace of Adioma Lukman in life because he's really, really fast on FIFA. Well, I think we have enough in attack to overpower almost anyone right now. So you have Moses Simon, lots of guys who can make a difference for us. So very confident. Until the final whistle is blown.
down at the Barbara Sports Stadium, the talk of superiority among the two countries will continue to dominate conversations. For Joy News, Nanaya Ojima Kumase. Well, so uh, let's have some discussions on this. Uh, Joel Bote is with Joy Sports, uh, joining us now with uh, more insight into the game. Um, Joel, so it's good to see you uh, just hours ahead of the match. So uh, what's your expectation? Uh, I mean, now that we have a clear picture of who's going to be featuring for Ghana and then the Super Eagles as well, what's your expectation uh, for this match? This game, um, it looks like it's going to be a very close one to call mm. because uh, the Ghanaians are playing at home and therefore having a home advantage does not necessarily mean um, you're going to take the victory. So we're facing a Nigerian side that's top class and it will be a close one because everyone is seeing the fact that the Nigerians on paper stand, stand a chance of taking this victory. So um, having a stadium like Babayara is where I would want to focus on it. Now I would like us to look at some of the statistics of the Babayara Stadium starting from 2006 yeah. where we had the qualifiers and when we look at that we'll be able to see that uh, with, the first, with the first few qualifiers we, we, we did very well we're able to get into the, the, the frame of um, qualification, as we can see, 2-0 um, starting against Somalia. And we went all the way to um, Uganda and got a 2-0 win over, over there. And we considered just one goal and scored 11. And at that time, we, 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 in terms of attendance, it was not so big because we, we previously, in previous World Cup qualifiers, we did not stand a chance of going where underdogs and we did not make it. So we can see that, that the average attendance was 28,000. Now if you come to 2010, when we were able to get our second um, World Cup participation, you see that an effect from the 2006 led us to here as well, where we see the increase in stadium attendance to 36,000. And we were able to get a, a good round of results at Babayara. Now when we come to 2014, where everyone was happy with our performance in 2010, mm. we also saw that increase in terms of um, stadium attendance, 38,500. And we had a 100% win rate at, at, at the qualifiers for the, for the 2014 World Cup. So it speaks a lot, what Babayara does for us. And when we come to 2018, this is where the results show what Babayara means. And we, we had a poor performance at the 2014 World Cup. It translated into how fans were enthusiastic about what we do um, in terms of a footballing nation and there was the, the average attendance to Baba Yara for the 2018 World Cup qualifiers was quite low and so it tells a lot that the, the crowd have something to do in terms of what the team makes or what the team is able to put out there so we're looking for that as well and on average we can look at the average of everything that we've done at Baba Yara and when we look at that we see that Ghana has been able to achieve so much playing at Baba Yara for a fun fact since 2006, when we started our qualifiers, we've not lost a single day, a single game when it comes to World Cup qualifiers. So, Baba Yara is a very, very um, instrumental figure to, to, to what we do mm. in the World Cup. Right. Um, shortly as well, we'll be gauging the mood in Kumasi to find out um, what's happening there. But uh, let's talk about the Super Eagles. It appears that in the Ghanaian media, we've not focused uh, a bit more on our uh, opponents. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, what do they come come to the field with uh, in terms of experience or what, what it is that we should be on the lookout for? So in terms of the Nigerians, mm. the strong point on the Nigerians is the attack. And, and I would like us to also look at the Nigerian forwards because when we look at them, we see why there's so much talk about the attackers. They have Victor Oshimen, Odoin Igalo, Sadiq Kumar, Kelechi Inacho, and Emmanuel Dennis. All these five players are top-notch for their clubs. If you look at the goal scored for each of them, you see three of them are in double digits for goals, and also one of them in terms of assists that Sadiq Kumar. And also, the way the Nigerians set up, they usually play with either Inacho behind the striker or they play two top, usually. So you see Inacho behind the striker, such as um, in the AFCON, we saw him behind a striker. And, and we can see him behind Oshiman, who is a serial goal scorer for Napoli, 15 goals this season. So. Nigeria have some, some, some attacking prowess that would definitely cause some damage, but we would have to limit how, we, how they are able to get into positions to create that damage. I believe Ghana has what it takes. I still tip us in this, this particular game, played by Bayara, because it, it speaks so much. Now, if you look at the heat map of our attackers, we can see Christopher Entry. I believe he can be a strong point for us because he, 
he's one that doesn't really stand in the middle. His focal point is not really in the middle. So he can play off the wide areas and that brings an advantage to us. Same for Emmanuel Dennis, who's of Nigeria, can also play in, in wide areas and also in the middle area. He does that for Watford. These are some of the players that we can also have a look at that in terms of um, attacking prowess. I think they've all got, we've all got what it takes. If Ghana is able to take their chances and, and, and capitalize on every opportunity given them, we can definitely take the result here and hope for the best in Nigeria. Oh, uh, and uh, we've been seeing footages of some uh, Ghanaian officials who are already uh, in Kumasi trying to uh, cheer up the, 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 the black stars as well. And not, and not just the uh, high-ranking officials, uh, even the indigents and residents of Kumasi seem to be elated about um, uh, the, the match being played in that part of the country. What, what will that add to the mix and, and to this whole decision? to play the game there. Yeah, so as I said earlier, Babaya yeah. is almost a fortress for Ghana. Right. So if you understand that bit of it, you know that each and everything we do at Babaya is significant. Each and every person that goes, each support coming from that region is massive. And we, we, we love that about the Kumasi folks. They always give their all to the Black Stars. So with having such dignitaries up there, even speaking of the universities, KNUSTA, Katanga boys are out there in their numbers. This speaks a lot for Ghana that when it comes to such a big game, regardless of things that have happened in the past, the support would not go down for the national team. And so I expect this to be a, a sort of backing to us and help us achieve the results we needed. Well, uh, and if you're watching us at home as well, feel free to join us. Uh, the lights will be on your screens right now for you to share your predictions with us. 0302 116. Uh, 691 um, so 0302-211-691 or 2 these are the lines on which you can uh, also join the conversation and share your predictions with us uh, tell us what you think about tonight's match uh, Joel Wote is still here uh, still analyzing all of the issues uh, with us so uh, Joel um, okay just before we do this first caller. Uh, I guess um, there's a need for us to look at the injuries as well. That's been a concern for some um, experts who say this could have a toll on the Black Stars. How about that as well? Um, in terms of injuries, it's quite unfortunate Ghana is missing Edmond Ado, who's confirmed to be injured. Also, last night there was a bit of a knock to Kofi Tre, which um, comes as a blow to the Ghanaians because if you look at what Kofi Tre has done for us, Speaking from the last African Cup of Nations, it was very, very instrumental to that last game against Comoros. And also, um, his form for Sao Paulo in the German second division, I'm sorry, first division as in terms of the second Bundesliga, he's been instrumental to the club's success. They currently sit top of the, the, the league table and he's, he's had goals and assists in there for them. He's been on fine form. So we are expecting that for that to translate into our national team, but quite unfortunate that he had a blow. We are hoping that it's nothing serious and he can still feature in today's game because he's one person I expect that if he does feature, he can grab something in there for us. But unfortunately on the Nigerian side, they are without Wilfred Ndidi, who has been their key man in terms of midfield. He's done ball distribution, ball progression and all. And also they are without their goalkeeper, Manduka Okoye, who is their number one. And so it's a big blow to both nations. They are having some injuries in there. We are hoping to see how they cope. Without such players. Uh, Gary L. Smith is joining us uh, from the venue grounds as well, uh, just to give us some updates uh, and a feel of what's happening ahead of the match. Uh, Gary, what, what can you tell us? Hi, good afternoon. Um, yeah, I'm just opposite the stadium. And, well, what I can tell you is that if you had any contrary reports that Kumasi was not ready and that Ghanaian for some reason are angry with the team and are not coming to the stadium, please discard anything. As early as 7 a.m., 7 a.m., people were trooping to the stadium, the stadium because, you know, electronic ticketing was used this time, and so a few people had some issues with their ticketing systems, and so they came to resolve them. Most people even had tickets, but just came to hang around to check what was going on, and of course, you had the media also besieging the place. As you may have heard, 1,000 media accreditation uh, applications were had and 468 have been given. It's one of the biggest I've seen in my career for a Black Star game. Mm. That is not, you know, like um, a tournament. 
468 media accreditations have been given and from around the world. And we've been told that a significant number is from outside the country. I'm currently in a bar. Uh, for those of you who know Kumasi, it's my kitchen just opposite the stadium. And um, I mean, it's, everybody's waiting to get into the stadium. I see people in red, yellow, and green everywhere in various colors of the Black Stars. Also, um, a Nigerian population, I think, around as well. And, you know, a few of them are spoken to express happiness at the fact that, you know, they were having a few chitters about um, probable hostile treatment, but everybody has been good to them and all that. So I'm guessing that with it's two, just after 2.30 now, I believe, right? If I'm not mistaken, time is, yeah, 3.30. 3.30, so we have about four hours to kick off, and the atmosphere has been building for hours and hours now. People selling wares, paraphernalia, and stuff like that, and it's really, really good, really, mm. really good. Uh, Gary, um, we're also learning of reports that the tickets have sold out, and yet um, someone was also arrested earlier today uh, for trying to sell fake tickets as well. What, what more can you say about that? Well, it's even in the most advanced football countries, you always have to deal with tickets out, don't you? So there are people who specialize in looking at when they can buy the tickets, the premium tickets, as early as possible and make a margin out of it. And the security agencies are always, you know, on the lookout for them. So uh, we understand that the police and the authorities had a tip about these two Nigerians, a man and a woman, and so they nabbed them this morning. Um, I'm hearing, I can't confirm this, but what I'm told is that they had made sales of more than 4,000 CDs, and so they were picked up with that as well. Mm. Okay, so let's talk technicalities now. Kofi Shure has been trending on social media all day um, for a number of reasons, but technically speaking, what can you say about um, his readiness for the game or otherwise? We have no idea. We are, we are as much in the dark as you are. I mean, I'm sure this is not news to you, for the past two or three weeks, the Ghana FA have been incredibly tight-lipped about everything. You know, they've, they've hardly spoken. The only media conference they've had, or media contact they've had, was yesterday when we had the official media conference where Otuadu and Thomas Partey came to speak as well. There has been absolutely no official word about anything, and our usual sources are not saying much. Uh, my colleague Mustafa Nabula said on the media news that it's likely... Kofi Tre may not start the game, but again, that is not official. That's just according to what his sources say, but there's no official word at the moment. Hmm. Uh, Gary, we'll get back to you later in the uh, day as, the, right, uh, as, as events unfold. But Gary uh, Al Smith joining us uh, live uh, from Kumasi. He will be uh, giving you live commentary on Joy 99.7 FM as well. Don't forget that uh, Joel Bate is, is also helping us out here understand uh, the technicalities of the game. So um, as we wrap up on this uh, one, what's your prediction? I keep asking you, I asked you yesterday uh, about your predictions. You weren't certain at the time, but I'm sure that you have all the facts with you now uh, just to point at something, either a victory for the Black Stars or something we're not, all not expecting to hear. So um, I'm predicting a victory for the Black Stars right here at home, mm -hmm. but I can't say for Nigeria. So mm -hmm. let's just look at home and I'll just say it's possibly going to be... Okay, so, so, so your prediction is just for what's happening now, now. here, yeah. today. Yeah. But for the second leg, we're not too you sure of the outcome. Happen, yeah. Is it because you're not too confident about the team and, and, and their style of play? Not really about the team. Actually, I think the technical team plays a role because I've mm -hmm. not seen them in operation. I've not seen what they can do. And let's not forget, their head coach, of the head coach of the Black Stars, Otohado, has not coached, he has not been a head coach in any official game. So... That, that, that is the problem. I can't tell his tactics and all. And that's what we are all in. We are all in the right. dark in terms of whether Ghana or Nigeria. Nobody knows his tactics. Nobody mm. knows his style of play. So as a result of that, I'm just a little bit concerned to, to, to that. I believe that if you're able to see his first game from there, we can deduce some facts and some figures from there to tell what could happen with mm. the next game. Uh, for now, I'm, I'm, in general, I believe that with the atmosphere, with the mentality and with everything that's happening, I, I believe that the Black Stars can get a victory here. Yeah. Well, uh, Joel Bate is with our uh, Joy Sports team. Uh, this is still The Pulse. We take a short break. We'll return to talk about uh, the reconstruction 
of uh, a PAT. Stay with us.